In this video we're going to cover some basic trigonometry. We start off with a circle which has a radius of 1. We have a blue dot. This blue dot is going to rotate round the circle in an anti-clockwise direction. Right now the blue circle is sitting on the x-axis. The x-axis is defined as 0 degrees. The blue dot will move round to this point here, which will be 90 degrees. This point here will be 180 degrees, and then to this point will be 270 degrees, and all the way round to the beginning again, which will be 360 degrees, which is equal to our original 0 degrees. Now as we move this blue dot round about, we're going to generate the sine function. So you'll see the sine function being generated here, and it's the blue dotted line. So this is our sine function. So let's have a quick look and see how we generate this sine function. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the y-axis is simply the radius of the circle. Now, if we wanted to, we could change that radius to any value, but we'll just stick it with a value of 1 for the moment. Along this axis here is the angle. Now, we said the angle is going to range from 0 to 360 degrees, but you'll note here that this function here gets up to a value of just over 6. In fact, it's 6.28. Now, the reason for that is that this length here isn't measured in degrees, it's measured in radians. So, it's just a different scale. We'll talk about radians in the next video. So now we know what the two axes are, how do we generate this function? So let's take this back to zero degrees. Now you'll notice we've got the pink dot and the blue line. And what we've done is we've drawn another two lines in. So we've dropped a perpendicular from the pink dot to the x-axis, and that's this little pink line here. And we've also connected the line from the pink dot to the y-axis, so that's this line in white. So in effect we've generated this little triangle. Now in this little triangle we've got the angle theta that we're interested in, which is the angle between the blue line and the the x-axis, so that's this little angle here. Now you'll notice that the other angle here is a right angle. Now in trigonometry we're interested in the ratio of the sides of the triangle for different angles. So the first trigonometric identity we're going to look at is the sine function. So in the sine function, we're interested in the ratio of this pink line here to the blue line. Now we give those particular names. The angle we're interested in here is this angle. The length which is opposite that angle is called the opposite. So this is the opposite here. And the length which is adjacent to this angle is called the adjacent. So the little white line here is the adjacent. And the hypotenuse is the blue line here, which is just the radius of the circle. Now in the sine function, we're interested in the ratio of this opposite to the hypotenuse. Now in this example here, we've made the value of the radius of the circle a value of 1. So it means that this length here, hypotenuse, in this instance, is just a value of 1. So whenever we look at the sine function here, we're looking at the ratio of the y divided by the r, which is the hypotenuse, which is just 1. So it's y divided by 1, which is just the value of y. So in this simple example here, where we've got a fixed radius of 1, the value of this height here is going to give us the sine function. So what we're interested in really is just this height as the pink dot rotates round the circle. So you can see here that 
the height is increasing and it's increasing till eventually the height of this blue line, the pink line, goes to a value of 1. And that happens at 90 degrees. And then the pink line is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes to a value of 0 at 180 degrees. And then the pink line is going to get larger and larger and larger until eventually it goes to a value of minus 1 at 270 degrees. And then at round 2, 360 degrees, you can see it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets back to a value of 0. So we're interested in that height for each of the 360 degrees of angle. So we can see that if we were to actually add in the little height element here. So you can see as we work our way around about that the, we've moved this blue, this pink line onto the actual angle. So as we move this round about, we get to a value of 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees here, and it's a value of 1. And as it moves round, it will go to 180 degrees. And at 180 degrees, this will go to 0. And then it will move down to minus 1 at 270 degrees. And then it will go to 0 again at 360 degrees. So the height of this pink line is our sine function. And you can see here that we've just drawn in the actual height here for that function. So you can see the height here maps out the sine function. So that's how we generate our sine function. Let's go ahead and we'll look at the cosine function. Now the dotted line here is our cosine function. So let's see how we generate this function here. Again, we have our triangle, but this time we're interested in the ratio of the adjacent, which is this x distance here, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the radius of the circle. So if you like, we're interested in the ratio of our x divided by our r. But as I said, the value for our r here is just a value of 1. So it's just going to be x divided by 1, which is just the value of x. So really, for the cosine function, the height of our cosine function is going to be given by this white length here. So from the pink dot here to the x-axis. So you can see here that as we move this round about the circle, this height here is going to change. So you can see it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it goes to zero. And then it starts getting bigger again until eventually it goes to a value of minus one. And then it's going to get smaller again until eventually it goes to a value of 0 and then it's going to get bigger again until eventually it goes to a value of 1. So again what we can do is we can actually place the height here in white. So you can see here the height in white here, this height here is the same as this length here. And we've just moved this down so it sits on the correct angle along this axis. So you can see here it goes to a value of 0, it goes to a value of minus 1, it goes round to a value of 0 again, and then eventually it finishes up at a value of 1. So this height maps out the cosine function. So let's put the cosine function in and we'll see that mapping. And you can see that the height here is mapping out this dotted function here, which is our cosine function. So let's go ahead and we'll look at our final trigonometric function, which is the tangent. The pink dotted line 
that we see here is our tangent function, which is just shortened to the word tan. So let's go ahead and we'll see how we generate this tan function. To create the tan function, we're interested in the ratio of the opposite, which is the pink line here, to the adjacent, which is the white line. So if you like, we're interested in the ratio of our y divided by our value of x at all of our angles. And that ratio is going to give us the height of our tan function. So, for example, if we were to look at the value of 0 degrees, or as we get close to 0 degrees, you can see here that the y value will tend to 0, and the x value will tend to a value of 1. So it means that the ratio of the y upon x, as we tend towards 0 degrees, will be a value of 0 divided by 1, which will be a value of 1. 0. And as we move round about the little pink dot, then we're going to get different ratios of our y to x. And these ratios are going to map out our tan function. So if you like, we can stick the ratios down. So this is going to provide us with the height. So you can see the white line here. The white line here is going to be the ratio of our y divided by x. Now you can see here as we get head towards 90 degrees the y value is going to head towards a value of 1 but the x value which is this little line length here is going to head towards a value of 0. So we're going to have 1 divided by 0 which is undefined or if you like it's tending off towards infinity. And then as we Move in in the second quadrant, you can see that our y upon x is going to get smaller and smaller until eventually the y upon x tends towards zero. And it's getting taking larger again, tend towards infinity, and then smaller again, and it tends towards zero. So the height of this white line here gives us our tan function. So that means that we can generate our tan function by looking at the ratio of our y upon x at all of our angles and it gives us this function in with the pink dotted line. So that's our tan functions and that's us looked at our three basic trigonometric functions. So that's us gone over our three basic trigonometric functions graphically. In the next video, we're going to go over a few examples of how we're going to use these functions. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.